seen this camera before that I repaired, uh, I guess last year sometime when I took care of the problem with the video circuit. What I did not address is I did not address the problem with the viewfinder. So in this video we're going to take a look at the workings of the electric viewfinder on this, which is essentially nothing more than a small black and white TV screen. There it is, little two-third inch CRT, very small. Um, we've got no horizontal deflection, as you can see, it's going to burn a nice white line into the screen if I leave it turned on for any length of time, so we're going to shut it off. We're going to crack open the viewfinder on this and take a look at what goes wrong with it. The rest of the camera has already been repaired, so I don't need to, don't need to tackle that. I know there are still some issues with the, with the lens itself. The actual elements in the lens are actually starting to freeze up, which makes focusing difficult, but then again, I don't intend to use this camera again as a, as a recorder or even as a player. It's more of a prop just to show you what can go wrong with these things. We've already tackled the video problem in the camera, so let's get the viewfinder open and we'll take a look at what can go wrong with the viewfinder. Now all the electronics for the viewfinder are actually contained in a little circuit board that's right inside this viewfinder assembly. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to crack open the viewfinder. And we can do that without actually even removing it from the camera. There's a couple screws in here. We'll just remove these screws and the viewfinder itself should pop open and we should be able to service this thing without removing it from the camera. So we'll just pop out the screws. There's two, usually there's just two screws that hold this thing together and it should just open up. There's not much to these viewfinders and I can tell you right now the problem is going to be a capacitor that's gone bad in here. We'll just pop this little cover off here. That little lead should pop off there. Just like that. And this thing should just split open. If I remember correctly, it should just pop right apart. Just like that. So there's the inner workings of the viewfinder and as you can see it's nothing more than a little black and white TV. It's got to be the smallest picture tube ever made. And that little tube there is essentially the same size as a lot of Viticon tubes in the, uh, yeah actually it's smaller than a lot of Viticon tubes. The little Viticon tubes are usually a little bit bigger. I'll show you what a, what a two-third inch Viticon looks like to, just so you get a, a size comparison. So there's a two-third inch Viticon tube. That's what they, uh, the pickup tube in a video camera that use tubes black and white cameras would use one single tube like this. Um, broadcast color cameras would actually use three of these monochromatic tubes with a uh, color filter in front of it. This is from a security camera. This tube is good. And I'm hanging on to this as I do have some security cameras that use them. But I'm, not that they're in use, but I'm just hanging on to it for old time's sake. It's kind of a collector's item. Anyway, you can see by, by comparison, this is a much smaller tube. Here's your connector down here with your electron gun. A deflection yoke here, second anode goes up to here, and then there's the screen. But it's a lot shorter than a Viticon tube. We're going to open this thing up and see what has failed in here. It's going to be one of these capacitors I would think has gone open. So the first thing we need to do is we need to take the tube. I know my hand is probably in there. We're going to lift the tube out of the way. Now this white lead here, this is the actual high voltage lead for the second anode. It's coming out of the little tiny little flyback transformer here. And we've got a circuit board in here with some connectors on it. We're going to leave everything connected to the camera. We're just going to remove the circuit board so that we can work on it. The circuit board comes out just by releasing a little plastic catch here and the board will lift forward. So we just take out the little catch and this board should just lift right out of the case. Now the wires here won't be very long, but we can get the board out enough to see what we're doing here. I'm going to suspect that probably this little yellow capacitor here is probably the one that's giving me trouble just because from past experience that has been the one that goes bad on these things and um, yeah looking at the board here look at this you can even see it looks like it's been leaking you can see this here you see the discoloration on the board here I think this capacitor probably is the one that's gone bad on here now even though this is a CCD TR81 camera this same uh, design. This is the VF40 circuit board that this camera uses. A lot of the Sony cameras use the exact same board. So when I when I put this up, it's not going to be called the CCD TR81. How to fix the viewfinder? It'll just be called Handycam. 
uh, black and white viewfinder because the black and white viewfinder tubes that were used on the handycams are all very, very similar in design. I'm just going to plug my soldering iron in here because we're going to have to remove uh, this part and replace it. I'm pretty confident that I probably do have a cap of the right size for this thing. But of course, we're going to verify that that one's bad, even though it's leaking. Uh, we'll use the ESR meter on here just to verify that it's bad. Now, when you work on these things, make sure you've got your power turned off. Don't have a battery or anything connected. I've shut the power supply off, even though my power cord's still connected. The power supply is actually shut off. The reason why you want to do that is because uh, the flyback transformer is going to put about 5,000 volts to this CRT. So, yeah, you can get a good kick out of it. It's not gonna, probably won't kill you, but uh, you can, you'll get a good jolt out of it, that's for sure. So, um, to show you here, this is my my funky light. It's coming in handy. You can put the light exactly where I need it and take advantage of the magnifier as well. So this has been a big, a big help for me for service-wise is that I can position the mag or, or the magnifier where it does me the best good. Whereas when it was, when it had that little base on it, it was never really where I needed it because it was always in the way. The base was always in the way of what I was working on. So we'll get the ESR meter turned on here and we'll zero it out. I'll just back the camera off of it so you can see it. There you go. Now you can see the ESR meter. We're going to zero out the meter. There we go. The ESR meter is zeroed. And we'll just go ahead and we'll measure some of these capacitors. Uh, that one is completely open, as I suspected it would be. That one's completely open. We'll go to the next one here. 0.07, that's probably okay. And there's a few other electrolytics. There's actually only three, I think, or four on the board. There's another electrolytic over here. And that one, 0.36, that might be going a little bit high, but that one's not open. It's not going to cause a problem. There's another little one right down. I think this is it here. 5.6 ohms. Ah, I might be starting to head a bit south, but this one here is definitely open. I kind of suspected that. Whenever you see these colored ones, usually they're there for a reason. They're usually a high frequency or high temperature. This is a 105 degree high temperature capacitor. Uh, I can't see the voltage on it yet. But uh, we'll get this out of the circuit here. We'll go find another one, put it in. That should uh, make this viewfinder work again. We'll test it out and that'll complete this video because everything else on this camera has already been repaired. So soldering iron is just getting up the temperature. We'll test it by just giving it a pinch test. Don't do this at home. You'll burn yourself. But again, I think I've explained before, my fingers don't really detect the heat as well as they once did because of burning myself so many times when working on electronics with soldering irons. I was always dropping hot solder onto my hands and onto my onto my legs and everything else. You know, you'd be sitting there working on on something and you'd have some hot solder on the uh, on the iron and it would inevitably drip off and land on you. Okay, so there's this cap out. As you can see, yeah, it's leaking. This is a 82 microfarad 10 volt and surprise surprise look at the brand okay elna it's those crappy elna capacitors everything that used those things had problems i don't think i'm going to have an 82 in fact i guarantee i'm not going to have an 82 microfarad capacitor i'll see if i've got a 100 uh, if i don't have a 100 i'll put a 47 in but um, you know it might not give me full deflection on 47 but then again it might but 100 should probably be enough but let me go see what i can find Okay, the closest I had for this is 105 degrees Celsius, 16 volt, 100 microfarads. It's a little higher in value than the original one, but that's okay because it's you can usually go a little higher uh, in terms of capacity. It's going lower that is usually what you want to try and avoid because most capacitors, uh, their tolerance rating is they can be you know 10% under, but they could be as much as 50% more. So it's always okay to go a little higher in capacity than the original in most cases. So we'll just solder this back in here and hopefully this trace isn't damaged too badly.
Okay, now that we've got the trace soldered on, we can just go ahead and turn this thing on. Now I've got to be careful that I'm not touching any parts of the high voltage circuit or I could get myself a nasty little shock. So I'm just going to put the circuit board back in place here as best as we can for now, just to get it out of the way, keep everything safe. kind of where I want it to be and we can turn our power on and turn on the camera and we'll see if we've got full screen oh look at that and there's our picture it is working it's hard to see probably on this because of the, the camera is going to overexpose maybe if I zoom in on the little viewfinder here you'll see that it actually is working the picture off the viewfinder looks fine it just doesn't look uh, uh, the, the, the camera is not picking it up it's not doing any justice here but looking at it uh, it looks fine the contrast is good it just doesn't look as good on this camera here because it tends to be a little overexposed so there was the problem one, the one capacitor was bad causing that loss of horizontal deflection I'll put this thing back together and then this thing's out of here so I'll just turn off the power for a minute here while I make sure that the circuit board is snapped in properly. Got to, got to get it underneath the little uh, tabs on here, otherwise it's not going to go back together. back in there then the tube can slip back in redress the wires snap the cover back on just like that now we can put the screws back in the thing and that one is fixed Also, there's a little brightness control on the bottom down here there's a little control that's to adjust the brightness of the CRT so we can turn it on and using a small screwdriver or is it focus I forget this means brightness yeah it's brightness so we'll turn the brightness down a bit and let's see if we can get this thing to focus on it it probably won't but there it is yeah, it looks, it looks a lot better looking at it than it does on the camera. The camera doesn't pick it up, doesn't do it justice because of the rolling shutter. It's, this is a fairly long persistence phosphorus and everything, well, you can see it is working. We have full deflection. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.